Rosie, you never talked about your detransition process on YouTube. Yeah, I've kind of danced around a little bit. I've talked about a few things as it unfolded. And it's not been a journey without a few speed bumps on the way. And uh, today, I'm going to get into it. And I ask you as I do discuss this topic, this is, uh, you know, it's not easy for me to break the, uh, to break the, third wall or fourth wall, whatever it is, and come out and talk about personal things because I've always seen myself as somebody who wants to come on and just entertain people and just be the goof, the old war horse from Baltimore that you've enjoyed many years on here. But uh, now it's time to tear into a few things and discuss my detransition process. I think you're going to find it a very interesting uh, video, yeah, controversial, you know, some, yeah, been an object of uh, love and object of hate. I've been a ping pong ball between the two, but by and large, I consider myself pretty lucky. So let's get into this today. First of all, let me thank you for being here. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit that bell for all notification. I do try to be an entertainer first and foremost with vintage audio. You see it behind me, adding fishing and crabbing, metal detecting, live streaming and things like that. I joined YouTube for a very specific uh, reason. And when I did join, the tagline was broadcast your life. And I broadcasted my life in over 12 years. Think about this. People tell, oh, I've been uploading for three years, four years. I've been uploading for 12 years. And in that whole time, I've missed four days of uploading. Four. I mean, do the math. 365 times 12 or whatever. And then put four on top of that divided up in here like 99.999% of the days. Why? Because I've loved it and I have enjoyed it sharing my life and it's been a real journey i came upon the scene in january of 2013 it's a lugubrious uh, big mouth tra trans woman here carved out my niche on social media and here we are some 12 years later back before i even began living full-time as a male now it has been a journey fraught with tears there's a lot of things i don't share on on YouTube because number one it's been a it's been a very humbling experience for me humbling in the sense that the decisions I made have had a lot of impact on others over the years family friends continue to have uh, impacts today and resonate as if you look at the title if you look at my channel page Rosie O'Kelly you'll see the subline is a most unique life and it has been a most unique life that's been lived very few people really get to experience both sides of what I call the gender equation and before you go off the rails I'm not I'm not claiming that I ever was even remotely like uh, FEMA. I might have had the appearance of it and things like it, but I'm not somebody that's going to co-opt a gender and say this is what I was very happy to be considered a uh, trans woman. And my life was happy. And people look at oh, you know, you're, you're never depressed, never really unhappy here on YouTube. You lived a good life. You were entertaining. We had laughs. We have a lot of things. And, you know, we're still doing that today because that's the core of who I am on the inside. But like I said, I've, I've found it a very humbling experience because I need to tread very lightly on the topic because, number one, many of my friends are trans and living that lifestyle. And I would never want to do anything that would inflict harm or emotional distress on anybody because, well, that's not why I'm on social media. And one of the reasons I haven't talked about my journey uh, at all, just here and there, and of course I did have sort of a, a religious conversion experience back then, and it's been good in, in my life, but it's mine, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna advocate for other people and say this is what you should do because I'm not designed, I'm not built that way, and I'm not that presumptuous. And quite honestly, I've done enough damage in my life and, and caused emotion, enough emotional distress to people, right? So I try to just think and use my mind a little bit and, and try, to, try to be 
a little bit humble about things. That's why I ask you guys to be to be kind here. It's not an easy process. We don't really know what goes on in other people's minds and things. And sometimes people that can appear the most happy are really the most depressed and most sad. I think it's somebody like Robin Williams who's an outstanding entertainer, just full of zest for life and just... And you wake up one morning and he's gone. Right? And you think to yourself, I never really knew that person, did I? Well, that's what entertaining is uh, is all about. You put a certain persona forward. And luckily, I think for me, my persona is always matched kind of the way I am. I'm, I like to think I'm the same when the camera's off as the camera's on. I irritate my friends just as much and delight my other friends just as much when the camera's, camera's off. So there's no real dissonance in the way I live. So what did I detransition? Apart from feeling like starting to embrace myself as I was creating. This, is, this was a very important thing to me. And uh, also I have to say that social media had a big influence on my decisions and things. And I think it, uh, despite the protestations to the contrary from a lot of people that are advocates for the lifestyle, and we never really used to have advocates for stuff, right? It would come from within, but now we have advocates and people going into the school system and telling people, uh, you know, uh, advocating for life. And I mean, it's not something I want to say that uh, to irritate people, but when you're young and, and particularly, we know that putting ideas into people's heads can sometimes lead them in directions that uh, may not be the healthiest for them. And I started to be concerned about 2000 and I think it, just as the pandemic was really winding in and people were getting into themselves in 2019, 2020, they had a lot of time. But social media was just hitting its stride on things like TikTok and things. And all of a sudden, the idea of being transgendered, I saw just kind of exploded out there, right? All of a sudden, it's just like, it seemed like everybody was, was trans or trans curious and stuff like that. And I... I thought to myself, well, real real quickly, there were people that rode like the cavalry, the advocates of the trans life rode over the hill. Oh, no, no, that's, this is a natural thing. This is people just finally understanding what they are because it's been revealed to them by social media. It's been a tool for allowing freedom for people. Okay, all right. Maybe so. But then I saw you know, how much through history people have wanted to use social media uh, to influence people, and not just social media, but television and movies and things like that, to normalize what was really rare behavior or existence before. And that's what a lot of trans advocates and people started to do that I saw. And uh, I'm not going to not drop names, and, and uh, it's not my intention to do that. You know, I've, I've been writing and written a whole book about experiences and how much society has changed uh, over the last 50 years in particular. And maybe not such in a great way. And a lot of that has to be, a lot of that can be attributed to negative changes in the way that we are being influenced by others and what we see. I always believed, and in my counseling and my talks with therapists and things like that about being transgender, that it was something that came from within. But in 2019, 2020, I started to see it be aggressively advocated from the outside. And if we can just get into the classrooms and we can just get in, in front of kids. And I thought, well, that's not going to be an authentic experience if it doesn't come from within. They may be depressed individuals anyway because of the negative influence of social media, particularly when you get into your teenage years, particularly if you're female. And you wonder, why am I so depressed? I'm comparing myself to all these other people I see on social media. I'm not making the grade, right? This idea of a gender difference, right? Living as a different gender might be the key to opening up my happiness, getting rid of shedding this, this, uh, uh, this female baggage of having to be judged by appearance, uh, just slop on a t-shirt and be one of the boys and stuff like that. This really started to horrify me. 
right? Because nobody in my circle that I had been uh, trans associated with was anything like that, right? They 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 were the furthest thing from advocacy, and some people were stirred up on social media. Well, Rosie, you have a you have a little bit of a following on social media. You should advocate. You should be more of an advocate. You should be standing up for these people. And I'm thinking, what people? Right? I don't even know if these people are making correct decisions these days of what they're being in. But it's, it's like a totally different. It's like a totally different pathway. When I started out, you had to live uh, dress as the opposite sex for a year before you could even get hormones. So there was this, there was this winnowing out process that you would take to public beatings and things. And I used to do videos about that stuff, going to events and things, and uh, basically appearing in drag. You're not on hormones or anything, and uh, you know, running for your life and stuff. Well, this 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 caused some people's hair to stand on, and then they realized, man, uh, uh, maybe I just better be happy where I am. <laughs> maybe I'm really not cut out for the. You know, it saved a lot of lives. It saved a lot of marriages. Probably saved a lot of families too, right? But nowadays, if you just present, and there's websites out there that are run by advocates and people that uh, identify places that you can go and with a with a Zoom call or on a single visit, a single journey, leave there with the prescription for hormones. And I thought to myself, wow, the due diligence really collapsed to the point that they closed down the gender clinic the Tavistock clinic in the UK because it was turning into just a mill and and girls were presenting at three times the rate of boys and uh, worldwide and there was something going on and I thought to myself wow you really leverage a lot of the rest of your life on this stuff and of course they'll tell you there's polls so oh, we're happy right of course you're happy you got what you wanted in the short term it's like if I wanted an ice cream cone, if I have the ice cream cone in my hand, am I happy now? Of course I am. Take your survey. But you know, life is lived over a period of decades. And if you're a, a, a young gal that's been influenced by social media and, uh, you know, threatened parents or authorities, if I don't get this, I'm going to do self-harm or something like that, it's a... You know, we're crossing into an area where people get people get scared, right? And people rightly should be concerned about things like that. But we have to understand that uh, parenting has always been a difficult thing. It's not always been easy to 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 hold your ground and say no, right? When you become an adult, you can make adult decisions. But until then, until then, you're my responsibility. And I love you enough. To be able to say, no, I don't think this is the right time. I don't think you're in the right frame of mind for this. And then to be to be defined and move ahead and then turn 18. And then make a decision to have a double mastectomy because you want to transition to male. Well, it's not, it's not up to me to hold you back. Right, but I'm saying, uh, I just caution people, are you so sure you're going to feel the same way in your 30s, 40s, 50s, or when you've done things to your body that, that will prohibit you from having, uh, you know, children and things in the in the future, so. But I always held these things inside of my, and I still do today, because I don't dare tell somebody else how to live their life. I'm not cut out to be an, an advocate. I'm just one person living life in this country, but I have eyes. I see the influence that social media has had on people. And I just think just because the bulk of the people seem to be happy now is no guarantee in the future, whether you're straight or anything, that you're going to be happy in the future or trans. But I've seen a lot of young trans people that or trans identified is making decisions that I think are being made in a little more haste today than is right to do so. Because, and if you think that, well, psychiatry and things gives the stamp on that. Remember in life, psychiatry and psychology always follow behind the trends that have been established. Okay. They don't lead it. They'll look at something that's occurred, and remember, uh, being trans used to be identified as a mental affliction, and then that changed, 
right, is a mental uh, thing to be worked with, to be worked through and understood to where it's okay now and things like that. Well, just because psychology says so, right? I mean, look at the growth of psychology in uh, in the Western world today. The explosive growth, and yet if it's supposed to be such a wonderful avocation and profession, well, why do we have so many? Why do we have so many more people depressed on a percentage basis today? Did at any time in the past, and well, I'm writing a huge book about this. And it could be today that psychology is the real opium of the mass is far different than Karl Marx said about religion. But that gets pretty deep here. But my point is for my transition, I could look around and say to myself, you know, I'm the same person as I was before, but I've come to embrace how I was created. But that does not give me the right to inflict a position on anybody else or us, much less an advocacy. So when I see advocacy taking place in places like school today, where you can't even, you dare not even talk about an ethical issue, but it's okay to talk about, uh, you know, living as queer and this type of thing. Hey, okay, it's I'm not the school board, I'm not the teachers. But I think to myself, you're really getting an unbalanced view particularly when it's young people coming in that have not even begun the journey of life in their 20s and things advocating for this lifestyle. And I think to myself, you have such a long way in life to go. And I know the old war horses from Baltimore like me and the, the older people that have gone through the journey and things. You don't want to hear what we have to say. I get it. Right? We're just probably just marked as failures in life, and that's okay. But if I didn't genuinely open my mouth after thinking and writing about this for a year and a half and pouring my heart out into a massive uh, book that I've been writing here, I would be less than genuine, and I wouldn't feel like I was doing my duty to say, just slow down. Right. Understand that other forces are at work in the world that may not be accruing to your benefit, that may not have your best interests at heart. Does that hint that there may be demonic and evil influences in the in the world? Well, if you believe in right in new age and spiritual practices, well, not every spirit in life is a good one. Okay, I'm telling you, and if you think it is then you've missed the whole balanced dynamic of good and evil in the world as they exist today and manifested through people. So I tell people there's a lot to be said here. But for me, the decision when I looked around was saying, wow, I think there's more to this transition process and immediately meets the eyes. And I do pray <clears throat> that people will <clears throat> make decisions that are right for them. And for those that choose to be judgmental and things like that, I say, right, people have to live their lives. But we owe it to them to make sure that they're well informed about things. I love the people in my life that are trans, my trans sisters, my friends. Right? They're happy, they're adjusted, but they were of a they're of a different era. You know, they're 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 good people. They weren't influenced by the way that young people are today. So I'm worried about the huge numbers of people that are leveraging their life. Am I happy today? I'm just as happy as I was two years ago before I started the process. Probably a bit happier now because my mind is less aff aff afflicted. I feel like I'm more in harmony with the way that. Uh, that the world and creation is unfolded here, and I'm happy for that, okay? But do understand that everybody's journey is different, but I found what was right for me. Hey, if you enjoyed the topic, thank you. It's a long time coming, I realize that. There's a lot of people been after me for a long time. Tell your story, tell your story. We need your story for this, we need your story for that. 
Well, my story's actually gotten a pretty boring, right? Person, person lives one way, lives another, and lives that original way again, finds happiness and continues forward in life. Hey, I'm here to be a uh, entertainer, first and foremost. A fisher, a crabber, a vintage audio enthusiast, a repairer, right? A live streamer who risks life and limb to get out there on the urban streets of America and uh, have a good time doing metal detecting, everything else that moonshining before. You'll find it all on the channel, and I hope that you will subscribe. I'm going to close it out now. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, if you're not subscribed, subscribe and hit the bell for all notifications. It is a very unique life. Thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day.